Step 6. The Name Game Now, we know that the names of the badniks and the villain are different between the East and the West. To avoid confusion, I was thinking to keep the names to be where they are. For example, the name Eggman should stay in Japan, unless Sonic uses it as a funny insult to Robotnik, and the name Robotnik should stay in the United States or other parts of the West, unless the Japanese do use the name Robotnik. But if both the East and the West were to use the names, Sega should remember one thing. Compromise is your friend. Before they should start using the, excuse me, the name game, I say study the cultures around the world and understand what region, what region likes and dislikes, what languages they speak, and what continuities they made or used to avoid any clashes or bitterness. But anyway, there are people who still like the name Robotnik, mainly because it's a better villain name. But did we have to abandon everything all because a country likes their stuff better? Like I said before, compromise is your friend. Step 7. Voice Acting Yes, I know. We're all sick and tired of the Drummond vs. Griffith debate. But to me, I think it's best to try and hire voice actors who know what they're doing, what character they're voicing, and voice the character to be how everyone wants. Not to mention voicing the character with a huge passion. If I had it my way, I'd find a voice actor who has been wanting to voice Sonic for many, many years, and it also goes for Robotnik and other characters, or just those who are interested in voicing other characters. Now, whether the voice actors are new and fresh talent or veteran professionals, I don't mind who they use. But like I said, it's best to hire actors who have a clear understanding of the character and, de and deliver brilliant performance and would act as if the characters are real to them. Yes, I'm, that might sound strange, but would you rather have terrible voice acting? I think not. Step 8. Director. Another important thing is to hire a director who knows what he or she is supposed to do, knows what the characters are, and everything in their universe. A director's job is to explain to the actors what their job is and what their parts are about, along with describing to the actors what the environments are like. That is, if the director is among the voice actors. It's best not, under any circumstance, not to hire the directors who did the following video game movies. Super Mario Brothers, Hitman, Doom, and The Name of the King. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Ewa Ball. I say hire someone who has experience, knows what he or she is doing, what the characters are like, what their universe is like, knows how to make a, a good movie with a decent storyline, and has a huge passion for the project. Kind of like James Cameron, Steven Spielberg, and George Lucas. Now, say what you want, but at least they know how to make a few good movies with epic storylines. Step 9. Format Ever since the mid-1990s, CGI has pretty much taken over the special effects, and animation is no exception. Back in the day, there were no CGI films or TV shows, and around that time, the only thing the animators had was the 2D format, which is the hand-drawn animation, but I guess everyone knows that. It was already well established by Disney and many other iconic cartoon studios from 1960 to excuse me, the 1960s to now. Now, lately there are rarely any 2D films and 3D animation took everything over. But what what should be the format for the movie? And sorry for the background sounds, if you can hear them. Well, Sega has gotten into the CG craze and from what I heard they, f they focus mainly on the graphics in their games. Which pretty much explains why they suck. But the good news is that, well, back in 2007, when the Simpsons movie was released, they did return to the 2D animation, but they did have some 3D models. And this is Fox I'm talking about, not Sega. Now, like I said, what should be the format for the Sonic the Hedgehog movie? Well, my answer is 2D. I mean, aren't we all sick and tired of the CGI 3D animation? Now, where should it be made? Well, I think it should be made in the United States or the West. I don't really care where, to be honest. Or, if you, if for those who actually prefer Japanese anime, then, 
yeah, I guess we can stick to Japanese anime as long as it's done right. But for those who actually want 3D animation, here's a format that is extremely rare and close to a compromise. Cell-shaded graphics. And for those who don't know what it is, well, it's, there are just three models that strongly resemble 2D animation. For those who have seen the Simpsons movie, or those who are big Futurama fans, or those who are graphical designers, you guys know what I'm talking about. So, like I said, for a Sonic movie, either 2D animation, either classic western style, you know, like Warner Brothers or other animation studios, Japanese anime, or, for compromise, a 2D cel-shaded anime or whatever movie. Step 10. Culture. Now, from what I heard, what may be cool in Japan may not be cool in America or anywhere else. When it comes to storylines and everything, it's best that both the East and the West, the East being Japan, the West being United States and Europe, mainly United Kingdom, to study the cultures and understand them to avoid any cultural bitterness and conflict. Remember the game Sonic Extreme for the Sega Saturn? Well, that was canceled not only because of engine problems, but also because of the cultural clashes between Sega of America and Sega of Japan. So, how do we avoid that incident from happening again? Best for them to understand the cultures. I mean, how hard could it be? Step 11. Sound or music. If you're a longtime Sonic fan, then chances are you're very familiar with the theme of Green Hill Zone along with Sonic collecting the rings, Sonic jumping, rolling into a ball, the springs, and yes, including the opening title theme for Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and Sonic 2. Now let's fast forward to the present. Until recently, Sega continued to use the Crush 40 music, or some other music that is similar to their rock music or any other of their music, for the majority of the titles, levels, etc. In fact, hardly anything, including the sounds, with a few exceptions like the uh, star pose, the rings, and losing the rings, no longer resemble the classic games. Sure, some other adaptations made new themes to set the tone of the movie or the game. So what's the solution for this? Well, after hearing the orchestrated music in Unleashed, well, some parts anyway, along with some remixes on YouTube, I was thinking of using more orchestrated versions of the tunes from the classic games. It's been done more than a few times. I mean, look up Green Hill Zone orchestrated on YouTube. I mean, that's what Green Hill should sound like in THE Sonic movie if it were to be made, and I even posted a link in the description for you to hear it. Making a simple tune sound epic is really not that hard if done right. Hell, I've always wanted to hear what the Sonic 1 title theme would sound like if it was redone and used as an epic theme for Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, speaking of the sounds, why not use an organic soundtrack by using ordinary objects to try and make the sounds, but still try to make the sounds as close to the original sounds from the games as possible? I mean, how hard could that be? It worked for Star Wars.